Hi and welcome! In this video we're going to lay the foundation for Hangman game. We will learn what are arrays and strings and we will discuss immutability. By the end of this video we will have coded a small dictionary to randomly pick words from and a simple main menu. Let's start with arrays and strings. Imagine a situation, a school event for example. You need to log every participant's age and name. To log the age we use integers. And let's say we have 10 people participating. Are we going to create 10 integers manually? No. We can use a one-dimensional array. Think of one-dimensional arrays as of a list. To access contents of that list, we use indexes. We start from index 0 to 9. Keep in mind that in programming, we do not start from the first index. We start from the 0 and go up to n minus 1, in our case 9 with n being the size of our array or list. Here is the syntax for creating one-dimensional arrays. Now we need to find a way to store the names of our participants. We can use characters, an array of characters. But that's inconvenient. One-dimensional array of chars can store only one name. We need 10 one-dimensional arrays of chars. In this case, we get a two-dimensional array. Think of two-dimensional arrays as of a table. A table has rows and columns. We can use indexes of rows and columns to access certain elements of our table. Here is the syntax for creating two-dimensional arrays. However, to store names of our participants, we are going to use a new data type called string. A string is basically one-dimensional array of characters, and it behaves the same way. Using indexes, we can access elements of a string. However, strings are immutable. Immutability means that elements of a string cannot be modified. Let's take a look at this little program. It creates a string, initializes it, and then attempts to modify the first element of our string. To initialize a string, use double quotes. Compile and run. And we get an error. Cannot modify immutable expression. However, you can change the value of arrays you can reassign a new value to that string. Now, take a look at the syntax for creating and initializing one-dimensional arrays. To initialize an entire array, use square brackets and separate values with a comma. Alright, there is one more thing we need to discuss called dynamic arrays. Use dynamic arrays when the size is unknown. Dynamic arrays grow as we fill them with values. All arrays have the length attribute to get the size of the array. However, with dynamic arrays, it is possible to set and change the size manually. To add value to a dynamic array, use tilde equals. It will assign the value to the end of the array. There is a lot more to learn about dynamic arrays. If you are interested, you can find a link to a book on deep programming language on my GitHub account. It's a great book to read and learn D language. Now let's read a string from the user. I ask the user for his name and then I print his name. Use readline function to read a string. Compile and run. Readline function reads an entire line plus the new line character. That's why we have a strip function that gets rid of a new line character. Instead of readline, use strip readline. A little side note. If you plan to modify the contents of a string, use an array of characters. Otherwise, use a string which is immutable and cannot be modified. Alright, it's time to create a main menu and a small dictionary for our game. I recommend to pause the video and try to do it yourself first. It would be a great exercise. Alright, I hope you paused the video and tried to do it yourself. Here's how I would do it. The player has only three lives, and my dictionary list contains 10 words. You can add more words if you want. Then I create a main menu function to separate the code and make it more readable. You can put everything in the main function, however. That's it for today. Thank you for watching. In the next video, we will learn how to use a for loop and we will try to finish our game. Have a nice day.